There's no shortage of chaos going around the world right now. And naturally, there's been the story on the internet that's making laps within the last few weeks, which of course revolves around a family vlog channel. Shocker. So I decided I'd cover this topic as best as I could in this video. Feel free to sit back, relax, and enjoy some problems that are not revolving around you. So hey, welcome back to the A to Z channel. Let's just get right into this video. So to start the video off, the family vlog channel I'm going to be talking about is primarily ran by the mother, a woman named Micah Stoffer. You might have heard a few bits of the story due to all the recent coverage of it, but basically Micah and her husband ran a YouTube family vlog channel they called The Stoffer Life, which had around 300,000 subscribers until they deleted it. Micah also has a personal channel with around 700,000 subscribers at the time of recording this video. And recently, what brought so much attention to their channels is the fact that um, they returned their adopted child from China like he was something ordered off Amazon Prime. Really? So that in itself is a bit f***ed up to say in the least. But it now seems like they have four children and the fifth was an adopted young boy from China who is believed to have autism. His name is Huxley and they began the adoption process back in 2016. In October of 2017, Micah and her husband actually left and went to China to meet their new son, who at this time was two years old so they could bring him home with them. Essentially, they could go to China and pick him up. At this point, the couple claimed the son had more problems than what they originally were led on to believe. However, before meeting Huxley, Mike and her husband reportedly that they were never told that he had any issues other than a reported brain tumor. The couple conveyed that this alleged new information made everything a lot more complicated. Whether they're actually aware of the potential complications is up for debate, especially since they worked with medical professionals during the adoption process because Micah said they wanted to adopt a child with special needs. And here's where things get even more complicated. Micah says in a video that was posted back in 2017 that a medical professional had looked through the file of the child that they could potentially adopt and reported back to Micah that this child might actually be too tough for her and her family to take care of. Micah then explains that her reaction to getting all this information to have it all go in through one ear and out the other, because in her words, my son is not returnable. Boy, did that change quickly. And if anything, my child is not returnable. I So when I heard all of the things that that doctor was telling us, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. If I could play the Curb Your Enthusiasm song without being copyright claimed, I would, but uh, YouTube in 2021 allows to do so. But around the time period after she rehomed her son, that's so messed up to say, Micah was still uploading videos to her main channel, and, and the videos she was uploading to her main channel were spring cleaning, what I eat in a day, my morning routine. Meanwhile, Huxley's just being shipped off back to an Amazon Prime facility to get redistributed. Can I even make that joke? No. It's okay to joke about other people's actions as long as you're not joking about them. That's how I justify everything I do. That's how I sleep at night. But what I'm trying to say here is those are definitely not the videos that you would expect to see a mother creating while going through something like that, like returning her son. See, this is why this is why kids shouldn't have Barbies growing up because they think they can return them. I like to cut my Barbie's hair off really awfully. My mom would be like, you know, it's not going to grow back right. And I would look her in the eyes and go, I know. And then my Barbies would have bald patches on their heads. I remember when I was like 14 or 15, every time I had to like babysit, like, I don't know, family friends as daughters or something like that. They'd always have this like messed up drawer in the back of their closet that had like a hundred Barbie dolls. Half of them were missing their heads, limbs. I don't know. They were all markered all over. Oh, yeah. It was why? It's just how it's how to. uh let out your emotions. Strip the head off of your Barbie doll, cut its hair off, and scribble over its face, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Are you though? I don't know. <laughs> Her morning routine should be like the rest of us that are currently suffering during quarantine. I don't know. Wake up at noon, eat a stale piece of bread, and let uh, social media suck out the rest of your soul the entire of the day until you are completely out of energy and pass out. Wow, that was a little bit too real. But hey, welcome to quarantine in 2020. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to function if someone tells me <laughs> that I can't bring a Huxley. Like, this isn't just a kid in China. This is my son. Like, this is my son. Like, I have already... <laughs> birthed him in my heart. He is my son. That video did not age well at all. 
bruh. I just don't understand how that can be her reaction to finding out she might not be able to adopt him. And now that she's getting rid of him, she's posting, morning routine, nothing ever happened. The only thing that happened is I changed mommy of five to mommy of four in my bio. YouTube vlog channels just, or YouTube just breeds sociopaths by this point. Like seriously, like people just act out, they act so dramatic just to get all those like YouTube family vlog clicks. And then when enough time is given, their true colors finally come out. And then everyone's like, wow, why did we support that channel in the first place? Apparently, she documented this entire journey very thoroughly. Like, she had a whole series on it. So, why wouldn't she? Well, she's making money off of it, obviously. I know. Oh, a bunch of, by the way, a bunch of her uh, sponsors dropped her. As they should. We honestly couldn't imagine our lives without him. I always tell Jim when he talks to me about like having more kids and stuff. Sometimes he'll bring up like having another biological kid. And I tell him, I said, you know, if I ever had another kid, I feel like it would be through adoption because I never knew how much love you could have for a child that you never birthed. And like, he is my like, my baby. He is my little coconut. I love him so, so much. And it's just, it's beautiful to see like him evolving in some of the little tiny ways and seeing like his smile peek up a little bit more and seeing him look at us like with just those big eyes. So he'll ask for Jim to pick him up. And whenever he picks him up, he'll put his arms around his neck and squeeze him really, really hard. And whenever I see him do it, it just like melts me. Like you can just tell he knows that like James is his dad. Pan to the kid in the back of an Amazon Prime truck. Obviously, that's a joke, but she is so f- up for doing this like it literally just seems like she adopted a kid for social media sympathy or social media likes and engagement but in all seriousness this story is just it's not funny nor is it tea i genuinely think this is something that needs to be brought to light and actually discussed recently there was even a rumor around that huxley was actually missing but this was actually cleared up by delaware county sheriff's office in an official statement where they say that the delaware county sheriff has received several inquiries regarding the welfare of a local five-year-old child who was recently given up for adoption this child is not missing our primary concern for the well-being of this child as well as other children in the household our investigation is ongoing and will include contact with all children to ensure their safety all adoption cases are confidential and must go through a thorough process with specific requirements and safeguards. In private adoptions, there are the same legal requirements that must be adhered to. This includes home studies as well as background checks on the adopting parent slash parents. In this case, we're confident that the appropriate process is occurring. In addition, both parties are being represented by attorneys to ensure full compliance with the court process. Due to the confidential nature of this case, we will not be releasing any specific information or further comment. From what I've read, many people believe that Huxley was actually rehomed privately instead of through a public government program, which obviously means there's less rules and regulations around what actually happens. This entire story just keeps unfolding by the hour and it's just overall a massive mess. We're just trying to do our best to compile all the information that's out there. I apologize if I missed any details. We've been trying to just put all of this information out in an organized fashion for you guys. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below of all of this. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.